I'm glad to see you this morning. I hope everybody's well and happy. And let's read the morning message. Good morning. Today is, starts with an M. What day of the week is it? Tuesday? T -t Tuesday? Mm -mm. Um, Thursday? No, it starts with an M. So what day of the week will it be? Monday. Yeah, today is Monday. This is a sentence. Today is Monday. We'll put a period at the end of the sentence. We start the sentence with an uppercase letter. And because Monday is the day of the week, it has to be uppercase also. There are one, two, three words in that sentence. It is warm and sunny. Mm-hmm. I heard the meteorologist, that's the weather person, say that it was even going to go get very hot. So is the temperature going to go up or is the temperature going to go down? What do you think? If it's hot, it goes up. So we watch the temperature and see what the weather, what the temperature is today. We will read Caps for Sale. That's one of our favorite books. When I was reading it to you in class, everyone would be listening and watching and wondering. So because it's getting to be the end of pre-K, we're going to start reading some of our favorite books. And I know that this is one of your favorites, and it's really one of mine also. Caps for Sale. Remember, we have to pay special attention to the illustrations so we can figure out what is happening in the story. Um, it is, um, we're going to review our letters and sounds and we're going to do some number recognition work. But first of all, let's read Caps for Sale. It's a tale of a peddler and it's Author, it's a hard name to pronounce, Esvir Sobokia. Think. Look at those hats stacked up right there. Oh, I noticed something when I look at this front cover. I never have noticed that before. Oh, it's giving me a clue. It's giving me a clue. And what is he doing up in the tree? What is he doing up in the tree? Caps for sale. Caps for sale. Remember, a cap is a kind of a hat. <sighs> oh, see, there's so many words on this page. I have to have a lot of breath to read all those words. And I need my glasses, of course. Once there was a peddler who sold caps. Remember, we said a peddler is like a, a salesman, somebody who sells things. But he was not like an ordinary peddler carrying his wares on his back. That means what he's going to sell on his back. He carried them on top of his head. First, he had his own check cap at the very bottom. Then a bunch of gray caps. Then a bunch of brown caps. Then a bunch of blue caps. And on the very top, a bunch of red caps. Wow. He could walk and carry those at the same time. He walked up and down the streets, holding himself very straight so as not to upset his caps. That means knock them off or drop them. So he was walking straight and tall, like you do when you are in the hall. As he went along, he called, Caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. Whoa, that's a good price. 50 cents could, could just be two quarters. One morning, he couldn't sell any caps. He walked up and down the streets calling, Caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. But nobody wanted any caps that morning. Nobody wanted even a red cap. He began to feel very hungry, but he had no money for lunch. Uh, I think I'll go for a walk in the country, he said, 
and he walked out of town slowly, slowly, so as not to upset his caps, you know, knock them off. He walked for a long time until he came to a great big tree. That's a nice place for a rest, he thought. And he sat down very slowly under the tree. And he leaned back little by little against the tree trunk so as not to disturb the caps on his head. Then he put his hand to feel if they were straight. First his own check cap, then the gray cap, then the brown cap, then the blue caps, then the red caps on the very top. Could he really reach the red caps? I don't know. That's the author, though. The author writes the words so the author can tell the story the way he or she wants to. There they all were. So he went to sleep. He slept for a long time. Whoa, it was another sunny, hot day. Probably like today. When he woke up, he was refreshed and rested. Ah, that felt good. Do you notice anything about the man, the peddler? Mm. But before standing up, he felt with his hand to make sure that his caps were in the right place. All he felt was his own checked cap. He looked to the right of him, no caps. He looked to the left of him, no caps. He looked in back of him, no caps. He looked behind the tree, no caps. You can act out this story too. You can look to the right and you look to the left for the caps. You can look behind you, see if there's any caps back there. You can pretend you're the peddler. Then he looked up into the tree, and what do you think he saw? On every branch sat a monkey. On every monkey was a gray, or a brown, or blue, or a red cap. Look at him. That is many monkeys. The peddler looked at the monkeys. The monkeys looked at the peddler. He didn't know what to do. Finally, he spoke to them. That means talk to them. You monkeys, you, he said, shaking a finger at them. Can you shake your finger at the monkeys? You give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their fingers back at him and said, S -s 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 -s. This made the peddler angry, so he shook both hands at them and he said, You monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. Can you shake both hands and say, You monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook both their hands back at him and said, S -s -s -s. Can you do what the monkeys did? Try it. Now he felt quite angry. He stamped his foot. He said, you monkeys, you, you better give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped their feet back at him and said, S -s -s -s. Mm. By this time, the peddler was very, very angry. He stamped both of his feet and shouted, you monkeys, you, you must give me back my caps. Can you do what he did? He stamped both of his feet and he shouted, You monkeys, you, you must give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped both their feet back at him and said, S -s -s -s. Are you doing what the monkeys did? At last he became so angry that he pulled off his own cap, threw it on the ground and began to walk away. Oh yeah, he is so frustrated. But then each monkey pulled off his cap. And all the gray caps and all the brown caps and all the blue caps and all the red caps came flying down out of the tree. 
So the peddler picked up his caps and put them back on his head. First his own checked cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, and the red caps on the very top. Oh look, he's sorting by color. Huh. He's sorting by color or what kind of a hat it is. Slowly, slowly, he walked back to town calling, Caps! Caps for sale! Fifty cents a cap! The end. That was a great story. Um, and I know that you could act this out with your family at home and you could remember what happened first. Did he have some caps on his head when he started that morning? Then what happened to his caps? So please talk and review with your family what happened in the story. Um, we're going to play a, a letters game, and this is another letter game you can play at home. You can draw or write a letter on a piece of paper, and then you have to play scavenger hunt, and you walk around your house and see if you can find something that starts with this letter. Okay, we know that this is an O. Mm -hmm. It's an O, uppercase O, lowercase O. They look the same except for the size. Now, when I look around, hmm, do I see anything in this room that starts with an O? Hmm, no. Here, let's see which what they predict starts with an O, or what they labeled. Ah, octopus. Do you have an octopus in your house? No. H, you're going to look around your house and find something that starts with this letter. You can write it, or you can have someone else write it for you. And they showed a hat. Oh, this is a different kind of a hat. It's not the same as in our story, but you do wear it on your head. This is a hat, and they call these caps. You wear them on your head. V, hmm, I'm gonna look around your house. You can write the letter V, and then you're gonna see what could you find that starts with a V. A vest? Some people in our class did have a vest. I remember that. Some people did have a vest. A vest is like a jacket with no sleeves. No sleeves. K. Hmm. What could you find when you looked around your house that starts with a K? Key? Oh, I do have some keys. Hmm. Let's see. Now, we'll do a few more. And then we'll move on to talking about our numbers. E, E, something around your house that starts with an E. Hmm. Egg. Oh, we do have some eggs in the refrigerator. So that's just a game that you can play at home with your family when you're practicing your letters. Now, I wanted to do a quick review on our numbers. We have some magnetic letters. Magnetic means there's a magnet behind those numbers, and that's what makes it stick or attract. So I put the numbers in order. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What I want you to do, and you can do this at home, you don't need magnetic letters, although it is kind of fun to move them around. I want you to play a game with your family and it might be a little tricky, so you better use your homework your homework folder to help you know what's going to come next. I want you to choose a number, any number that you want to choose, and you put it up there. That number is three. Hmm. What comes before three? You have to look at a number line. And put the number that comes before it. And then you can do it again with a number what comes after five. Six comes after five. So these are just little games that you can play when you're at home to keep yourself thinking and exercising your brain so that when you go to kindergarten, you'll be all set. The kindergarten teacher will say, my golly. You have learned so much when you were in pre-K, and that's true. We have had so much fun, and we did so many good things, and I am so glad that we got to be together when you were in pre-K. So I want to say thank you for everything, and I'll see you next time.